In today's video, we are going to troubleshoot an electric hot water heater that is producing lukewarm water. This is a heater that has produced hot water for about 10 years, so we're going to troubleshoot the problem. We're going to remove the panels, take some electrical readings, and see what the issue is. This hot water heater works off of 240 volts. The electric box for it has two, two uh, breakers, or sorry, two uh, fuses here, 120 volts off of each one. Yesterday, when I first started troubleshooting this, this fuse here was blown. I replaced it with this uh, mini breaker, which you can reset through that, but that did not fix the issue. I'm going to turn the power back on Obviously, I turned it off for a while, and we're going to take some readings at the heater itself. There's two panels to remove on this hot water heater. The upper one gives access to the thermostat and element at the top of the tank, and the bottom one, obviously, for the same access at the lower portion. So this is what's behind the panel when I opened it up. Amazingly enough, I actually had the instruction manual for this hot water heater, which I left in the vicinity here about 10 years ago when I replaced this thing. Um, anyway, it tells us I've turned off the power again, by the way. I'm not going to have my fingers in here while I have to break this off. But apparently this little crossbar here breaks away and then gives us access. And it's just to rotate it up and down until it breaks. You can see why I turned off the power again, because when you're doing something like this, I want your fingers to slip into that 240 volts that's in there. And it's the same for the panel below. There's one of these down there, too. So. We're going to take some electrical readings at the top panel here. I have my meter balance but i want you to be able to catch these readings also i will put a link below this video to using a this particular meter to uh take ac voltage readings hopefully you'll see this so down at the bottom here is our heating element and we can see 244 volts or basically 200 and 40 volts that's our two 120s together and up above here obviously we're going to see the same thing this will be coming in from the electric box we saw before so this is up at the thermostat so we got 120 there that's one side of it main thing is that we see that the thermostat here is putting power 120 or sorry 240 volts down to the uh, heating element the instructions for the wa hot water tank tell us that in order to hit the uh, reset button we turn off the power to the heater Remove the access panels. Obviously, we've already got that done. <clears throat> and uh, the uh, hit the reset button with the power off. Make sure you <laughs> keep note of that. So I've turned off the power. And there's our reset button. Reset is actually marked on it. We'll hit that. I'll turn the power. Oh, hit it again just for kicks. Make sure. Okay. Turn the power back on. And we'll see if that actually made any difference at this point we know we have the 240 volts to the heater that we should have we took some readings 
I'm going to move ahead and replace these elements because this house is on a well and this heater is at least 10 years old. So I know there's going to be a lot of mineral deposits and I'm going to just move ahead. We're going to drain the tank and replace the heating elements. First step, I'm going to turn off the water input to the tank which there's a valve right here. You'll have to check your own hot water tank to see where the input is. So there you go. See, that's the cold water input there. Oops, sorry about that light. And we'll go over there to our electrical box that we looked at before, and we will turn off the power to the heater. In order to drain the water tank properly, we need to let air into the tank because as the water goes down it's kind of creating a vacuum vacuum so you can open the hot water relief valve on the top or turn on a hot water tap and that will air, allow air into the the heater as it drains connect the garden hose at the outlet at the bottom of the tank and then Open up the valve to let the tank drain. The instructions to drain my tank in my uh, manual said to either open the relief valve or open a hot water faucet now i've turned on a hot water faucet that doesn't seem to be really draining all that quickly so i'm going to open the relief valve as well here is the relief valve at the top of the tank <sighs> don't know if you heard that it sounds interesting opening that valve made a big difference that looks a lot faster Draining a lot better now. The water tank is now empty, as you can probably tell. Let's see how I can shake that around right easy like that. Uh, you may want to take a picture of how this is wired, just in case, or make a mental note of it. Anyway, we'll take the wires off of our element and unscrew it. With the tank drained, we're going to close off our valve and remove the garden hose. Here's our two new uh, heating elements in uh, Canada, March of 2023. They were 7588 taxes in. And the wrench to remove them was $17.81, including taxes. The soft metal included with our wrench didn't quite do the trick. So, I used this method that actually loosened it off. Make sure that gasket isn't left inside. It did come out in this case. Double check that.
this is unbelievable the amount of crud that is coming out of the bottom of this uh, you I would say stay tuned for later on because I'm gonna replace this tank um, but I have tenants in the house so I gotta at the moment I'm gonna continue with the job as is but look at that crap that's coming out of there took a ton of that calcium crap or whatever it was out of the tank as much as I could get out anyway as I mentioned this is going to be uh, there'll be a later video on replacing a whole hot water tank so clean that crud out of there as you can see with an old toothbrush double check that that gasket came off by the way Speaking of the gasket, this is the remnants of that uh, heating element. And again, we'll just, there's the, the gasket. So the, or wash or whatever, that did come off. Anyway, we'll install this new one. New heating elements are installed, electrical connections are made. Unfortunately, this is not one of these things where we can power it up and uh, verify our electrical connections because we cannot um, put the uh, AC power to the hot water tank until we fill it. So we will start that process. We'll turn on the water supply to the hot water heater and I've cracked one of the hot water faucets a bit to let the uh, air escape from the tank through the uh, hot water faucet as this thing fills. This hot water faucet is opened. In the background you can hear the well pump running. It's pumping the water into the hot water tank. Nothing coming out of this faucet yet. We have to close the handle on the top of the re relief valve at some point. So I'm going to close that now. And I can see that uh, kitchen faucet from here. There's no, still no water coming out of it. Here, we've got that closed. We'll see if the uh, air comes out of the uh, kitchen faucet. As soon as I close that re relief valve, we see the water, a little bit of water, and uh, feel the air coming out of this uh, faucet. Watch for leaks around the elements as the tank fills up. The bottom one, which obviously would have been uh, covered with water first, no leaks. This one, the top element, I noticed a small leak. Now I just tightened it up a little bit. Obviously I had to remove my wires. I'm tighten it up a little bit more. We'll see if there's any more leaks. Seems to be okay now. I took paper towel and dried all around that, so I'll be watching that one. You can hear the pump is filling the uh, has has kicked in and is continuing to fill the uh, water tank. 
This faucet has had a full uninterrupted flow of water now for a couple of minutes. So I'm going to shut it off and we will power up the hot water heater. The tank is full and I'm about to apply the 240 volts to it. I noticed we're down at the bottom of the tank here and the temperature setting on this one has gone right to minimum. I suspect that's probably a safety thing where that element was basically shorted out. So I'm setting it to 125 Fahrenheit, the same as the top element. It's two days later. The issue has been resolved. Lots of hot water. So what I want to illustrate to you here is what we discussed earlier when we were taking our voltage readings. I have my meter set on AC volts. And if I look at this element, zero volts. So that element is not activated. I go up to the top element, zero volts there. So neither one of them is activated right now because obviously the temperature in the hot water tank is what it should be. That faucet I used before is right over there. I might have to do a little time lapse thing. What I'm going to do is set that open up that hot water faucet and let our hot water out of the tank and then we'll take our readings as those elements get activated to heat up the water. Okay, there we have it. So that took a few minutes. You can hear the um, pump just came on. That's the pump down and it's, it's activated the pump down the well, which is pumping cold water from down the ground into the hot water tank. Our bottom element has been activated. We see the 240 volts there. I'm going to see if the top element has been activated. Uh, nope, still zero volts there. Well, you get the idea. The As the um, temperature gauge uh, relay has operated, it applies power to the element, which will heat up the water in the tank. Um, and I guess if I left, I, I'd let that uh, faucet run just to see if the top one kicked in, which eventually apparently it will, as I showed that screen earlier, if there's a lot of water usage. But I don't want to drain my well here either. i uh, just do a quick check on the top, see if maybe it didn't come on. Nope, still zero, vo zero volts at the element up top. Anyway, um, I hope this was helpful. Thanks for watching.